is going to oh my god oh my god what happened oh my god you hungry at all? Uh, yeah, I could use some food. I'm trying to make sure all my talking points are, are good. I could have been evil just now, but I wasn't. And do what? Bones was crashed out at the side of the highway. I picked him up and got him here on time. Oh shit, okay. I was thinking, shit, it would really suck if my car went into the water and I'd have to spend $7,000 to repair it and Bones couldn't make it to the debate. <laughs> but I, I, yeah. I showed up. I drove safely. Yeah, well that's good. Then, I said there's a lot of voters out there, dude. You getting the bubble guts? Oh, no, I, I was actually just taking a leak in my pants. Uh, you pissed your pants? Yeah, I was just standing right here. Cornwood go pissed ahead. his pants. Cornwood pissed his pants. Okay, go ahead and hop on stage. I did. Uh, Peeing your pants is cool. All right. Thank you, candidates and audience members, for attending this debate. Let's go ahead and get started by having each candidate introduce themselves, and then we'll get into the questions. Cornwood, let's start with you. Uh, my name is Cletus Cornwood, and, um, a senior officer in the LSPD. I'm also the PD liaison, voted by my peers. I was voted as a PD liaison a few weeks ago, and I've been working as a city councilman, helping to pass legislation and helping things and make this city the best damn place we can make it. All right, Viv. Hey, guys. Uh, I'm Sergeant Vivian Gray, currently Shift 1 LSPD. I've been a police officer for a very long period of my life, and I primarily work on keeping the shifts in line and hiring and training. Thank you, Viv and Bones. What's up, y'all? Uh, my name is Jeffrey Bones. I'm a sergeant in the LSPD. My main focus is uh, patrolling. So y'all see me, I'm sure y'all see me out there. All right, perfect. Oh. Welcome candidates. What kind of culture are you looking to instill within the department should you win? I mean, the thing that's important to me is I want to have high character individuals with a strong moral compass who can go out there and do actual police work. I want to establish a brotherhood in there. When they go in, they feel like they're getting backup from their brothers and sisters, and they focus on community policing. Everything I do is community first, and I look at it from a bird's eye view. I want to have this city be the best damn place it can be, and I think it starts by having ha having everybody as an equal part of that equation. I'm looking forward to... Uh put together a team of people who will work well together. They've got to be personable people. I want that team of people to be highly competent at what they do. I want them to be able to provide the support that the general state needs. I want to build a department that people want to be around. I think that, that's, the, that's the biggest thing that I want to build up. Um, not, only, not only people uh, in the force, but also people that deal with us and run into us on a daily basis. I think that's the, the most important aspect of a police department. All right, thank you. While we're talking about community, each of you are part of the same community right now, i.e. the police department. We're gonna go back and forth and we're gonna ask you to say one positive thing and one perhaps criticism about each of your fellow candidates. Positive for Cornwood is that he is a people person in the sense that people feel like they can approach him and speak to him very easily. And I think that's a great quality to have when you're leading a department. One bad thing about Cornwood uh, is that I believe his heart isn't always in the right place. I don't believe sometimes that he does things for the right purpose in which we should do. <laughs> How is Cornwood ever? Uh, right, for Bones, you. do you want me to say for Bones too? Yes, yes, oh, sorry. <laughs> okay. Uh, Bones, I think Bones is amazing at what he does. Uh, he's a very strong leader and I'm kind of going to flip that towards the negative as well. Bones' leadership skills are best utilized out in the field. All right, let's go to Bones. I think a positive about Cornwood is that he's very passionate. The, the negative I would say for Cornwood is sometimes he can be a bad example with some of the decisions that he makes and some of the stuff he says in front of his officers and in public. And Viv, a positive about her, she's Hell. very strong-minded and she believes in what she's want. She what she believes truly, like whatever she wants is the, is the best way to go. And I think that's that's very good. Uh, something negative is sometimes there's just a little bit of drama or pettiness that I've seen. But other than that, she's great. Uh, I got one. I think Viv is, is an incredible teacher. She led a big academy, built out the curriculum alongside Anita May, who's also an incredible teacher. Bones, I think, is a he, he's a phenomenal leader in the field. Uh, I think he's a, he's a great scene lead. He's good at being able to approach the situation and uh, distribute units as, as needed, putting people in the right position for them to get the job done. All right, I'm sorry, did I miss it? Did you have any criticisms of your fellow candidates? Uh, I, I don't really care to think about the, any, any criticisms or anything like that. That is fair enough. Okay. As far as we are talking about starting a sheriff's office and hiring people, 
you guys are going to need what you can refer to as a second in command. So if you have a running mate, why did you choose them? And if you don't, what are you looking for? What are you wanting to see in somebody? What are your plans for that in the future? Let's start with Cornwood. Uh, I haven't picked my under sheriff yet. And there's a very important reason for this. It's because I believe that there's a time for appointed leaders and there's a time for emergent leaders. They're two very different things and they operate very, very differently. I have several ideas in mind who I would take as an under sheriff. However, we have had way the hell too many appointed leaders in the LSPD. Way the hell too many people that are handed a position that they're chasing and they haven't gone and shown it. They haven't earned it. I need people to stand up out of a crowd and say, hey, not, okay, can I be the guy? It's, oh, this guy is the guy. This person doesn't ask for a position. This person isn't given a position. This person is shown. She or he or whoever it is can get that shit done. My plan is to have an undersheriff. You know, potentially I'll have uh, multiple captains instead of one undersheriff if, uh, if that's what I think is best for the department and the greater state police. Let's go to Viv. What I'm looking for is a person who uh, is going to have... Oh my god. Oh my god. What happened? Oh my god. Uh, what the hell? I got him. He's down. He's down. I shot him. Assassin. <laughs> Only one candidate was able to stop Holy him. Holy shit. About the other time. I'm awake. I'm awake. He's down. He's down. We're clear. Corn wood. 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 Thank you for saving us, Corn wood. Two people going to be hurt. Hey, does anybody need medical? Hey, does anybody need medical? I'm trained. Let me take a look at you here. Oh, we got EMS. Okay, good. Sorry about that, y'all. I don't like shooting into a crowd, but if I do, I ain't going to miss. Sorry about that. Sorry for scaring you. Uh, I have Cassidy selected as my undersheriff. Uh, I think he compliments me and my weaknesses very well, and we work very well together. I think it's something important. Um, I, I had, I heard some other people's answers that I don't necessarily are too true, because I've, I have heard firsthand, Cornwood, that Slacks is, you've asked Slacks to be your undersheriff. I don't know if you want to speak on that, but I don't think we should be lying in a debate. Oh, uh, no. Yeah, hey, Captain Slacks, you want to come up here? Because I, I told him directly. I said I, I would consider him. Did I not tell you Good yesterday I like what I said exactly? Him. Why don't we just let him speak? Yeah, you can go ahead and speak uh, all you want. Mug check, mug check. How's it going, Slacks? You, Slacks? Yeah, to address the allegation, he asked me, would you want to be my undersheriff? I said, I'll think about it. Oh. Ooh. So like I said, Bones, like I told you Thanks yesterday, fine. I wouldn't lie to the crowd and uh, say something otherwise, like you just claimed I was doing. Or just tell a half-truth. I mean, it's, it's not a half-truth. I clarified whatever, it, and I'm doubling down right now. With. He is somebody that I've considered for under sheriff. I mean, that, that ain't no lie. Does that sound like a lie to y'all? What sounds like a lie to me is Bones coming up with something that I already clarified yesterday, told him the truth, and then he comes up and says it again after he knew the answer, and he claimed that it was true. That's what sounds like a lie to me, Bones. I mean, we just heard it from Slacks himself that you have asked him if he wanted to be your undersheriff I, I i don't know what are you trying to like gaslight us into, the, into that or what we've heard it we've heard no it i yeah i did because i i was considering him as one of the undersheriff candidates okay but i did not offer him the undersheriff position bones you can't just hear something and pretend like it's something else okay part of that's emotional intelligence but also communication skills by the way these are great things that a leader needs to have right you need to be able to hear something and then understand what those words mean all right otherwise and the department's like not gonna run communication breakdown to be honest with you yeah that's what it Ooh. sounds like you're right communication Breakdown, absolutely, Viv. That's what it sounds like to me, Bones. All right, all right, all right. Let's calm down. Let's move on to the next question. How do you aim to hold people accountable? <clears throat> I keep hearing this word, accountability. Accountability. This word has come up an awful lot in the last six months my time here in the LSPD. And let me tell you, the reason why this word is coming up is why. People feel like there's a lack of accountability in the PD, right? People worry about a lack of accountability in the PD. Unfortunately, not being a part of command, I have no say in that. Unfortunately, I haven't had uh, you know, the opportunity, the ability to be able to, uh, I guess, strike people, dap people is the word that we use. Give them a disciplinary action point to stop shit from happening. And there's different degrees of accountability or different ways to administer this accountability and to watch it. Sure, giving them a strike point is one thing, giving them a dap is one thing at the end of the day that's a mark on a piece of paper firing somebody is not a solution is it the end result sometimes but the process needs to be teaching making sure that people know what they did wrong if we have to get rid of somebody we absolutely will unfortunately again i'm not in a position to be able to hold people accountable on an administrative level as my current position within the lspd uh, i'm not in a command position here like, like viv or bones are but i do have full intent and i will from the top down make sure that people are held accountable 
that I make sure people are learning how to get better at their jobs if they're making a mistake. And it's either my way or the highway. If you can't learn, I'm sorry, you are not gonna be a part of this police department, period. Yeah, do your job. Do your damn job. People say they don't want do your job meetings. Well, if you did your damn job, we wouldn't have a meeting about it. All right, thank you, Cornwood. How do you plan on funding the department? And is it as it is a well-known fact that the state or mayor's office will not be providing the UPD with any traditional type of budget. Uh, yeah, no, I, I love this question. Many people don't know this. Uh, within the first month of the city opening back up, we had no budget. We were waiting on a budget. I went and I replaced 16 different vehicle engines. Y'all know how much that costs. I bought all kinds of different enhancements for vehicles, turbos, sequential transmissions, all kinds of shit. I uh, distributed them to the PD. Was basically in charge of that. I spent upwards of probably ne damn near $300,000 from my own pocket for my own paycheck towards the PD. I spent nothing for myself because all I cared about was this PD and making this the best damn department and, and the best damn city that we possibly can make it. Uh, do you feel like you need to be a cutthroat to be a good sheriff? No, I don't think yeah. it's necessary at all. I think you just need to be level-headed. You gotta, you gotta come at everything very logically uh, whenever you're doing it. I don't believe you need to be uh, cutthroat at all. I think there's other ways of being able to lead a department and to be honest, you need to be as supportive as possible. Okay, so I, I would disagree. I think being cutthroat can mean a lot of different things. For me, being cutthroat means being steadfast in your principles. You know what you're doing and you, you feel strongly about it. But that place doesn't come from a place of ignorance. It comes from a place of knowledge, research, developing that over a long period of time like I have myself. Yes, absolutely. I believe that if we have a certain set of principles that I want to lead a department by, then if I have to be hardwood, look, I'm going to be hardwood. This question is uh, specifically directed towards um, Cornwood. What's your thoughts on um, people referring to you on the streets as Acornwood? A any thoughts on this? One? Wait, someone say acorn. Oh. Oh, oh, sorry. Oh, shit, oh, sorry. Yeah, you right? yeah. okay? Oh, shit. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. I thought, I thought, yeah, oh, your, oh, shit. What's your thoughts on, uh, what's your thoughts on those, uh, the, 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 that particular phrase, Cornwood? Oh, uh, sounds good. Mm -hmm. That's it? Yeah. I mean, what else is there to say? I mean, I, look, I got to do my job. It don't matter what people say on the streets, right? I, I heard there's a lot of trouble in the police department with turbos. What's your what's, uh, what's your future goals and plans to uh, ensure turbos are uh, something that, you know, are maintained within the police department? Uh, I don't think it has anything to do with the police department. I, I provide, I paid for and provided a bunch of turbos for everybody. Look, we already have all that provided, and uh, I ain't worried about it no more. I think our guys are, are set up for the future. I call no problem. Uh, come get your free kebabs sponsored by Bones. Hey, by the way, that donor kebab place is, is phenomenal. They, uh, they got yeah, some good-ass kebabs. Thank you. Right, next question, please. Uh, my question is specifically for, for Sergeant Bones. Today you talked about accountability and professionalism. Mm -hmm. uh, do you plan on calling your deputies pieces of shit like the time you called me a piece of shit when I told you who my family was? Oh, yes. uh, so just some context, just some context. Oh, wow. Um, this is a long time ago when me and Kit were riding. We, we were, I, I feel like we were pretty close. I, I was saying this in like a kind of a banter manner with nothing, no ill intention. I talked to her more than one time about this and apologized for it as well. I didn't know it was going to hurt her. I apologized for that. I'm sorry that <clears throat> it, it hurt your feelings and I, I, I shouldn't have said that. Okay, oh, that was it. <laughs> Kit. Oh, you. dude, Kit is so funny, dude. Uh, my name's Casey and I'm new in town and I'm here heard all of you guys talk about the having a united chain of command uh, regarding disciplinary actions uh, about not having separated jurisdictions so my questions to all of you is how are you going to separate yourself from the LSPD is there a need to separate us from LSPD I don't I don't understand the question in terms of yes obviously there's going to be their own identity in terms of the people that are working there, where we kind of operate mainly from, the meetings and maybe the events and stuff that we, we hold. But other than that, our ideals should align with each other. Like the, our end goal at the end of the day should be the same. Look, you talk about separating ourselves from the LSPD. The LSPD and the Sheriff's Office, again, two departments, still a part of the state police, right? We're, we are uh, still gonna have a commissioner that has oversight over both departments. And uh, we're not gonna separate from the LSPD. However, we are gonna have new methods. We are gonna have some new things that we're gonna be doing. We're gonna go in and we're gonna establish that culture. Separation is uh, is not really something that we're looking at. And uh, I think that's something that's not really healthy for the entirety of the city. But as far as building each other up and having a, uh, I think a little bit of friendly competition or whatever, we are on the same team. The LSPD and the Sheriff's Office is on the same team. One side is offense and one side is defense. Think about it that way.
okay? You might be playing on two different sides of the ball, but at the end of the day, you have one goal. This has not been pushed in legislation yet, but with my position as PD liaison, I'm looking at writing legislation for a castle doctrine, okay? A lot of y'all have legally owned civilian firearms, and y'all want to be able to protect your homes, protect your property. So uh, I'm looking at writing legislation, which has been, uh, I mean, it's been agreed to in principle. However, we have to get the pen, put pen to paper and get shit done. I want y'all to be able to protect yourselves in your own homes. Flippy, if somebody does that to you, you're going to be able to protect yourself if that thing passes, as long as you stand your ground legally. Damn, sir, sack of smoke your shit if you go to my warehouse six times? Well, I don't understand a word you just w, said. W, 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 w. That's right. I couldn't understand what you, you said. Did you say I could smoke your shit if you go into my warehouse next time? W, 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 if, w, if, yeah. if I were to illegally enter your house and uh, threaten well, you. you did that? No, I didn't do that. Oh, so oh, if I were to uh, illegally, if I were to illegally <laughs> enter your house or enter your property and to damage your property and do shit like that, you could protect yourself. You could stand your ground. Okay. Thank you. I'm here for y'all. From Cornwood, closing statement. Like I said earlier, I'm here for y'all. Uh, my name is Cletus Cornwood. I've spent a lot of time working on this. A lot of hours, blood, sweat, tears have gone into not just asking, but to developing and building out a plan that's been shared multiple times. And there's been a lot of thought that has gone into this. And I would love to be able to show y'all how my vision can help to make this city the best damn place it can be from the position of the police department.